Welcome back to Let's Both Play Resident Evil 5. I'm Burning Dog Face. And I'm Ronan Drake, and oh, I just triggered a cutscene. What is this place? Good question. Wait, is this where the Black Panther gets his heart shaped herb? Seems like a lot of trouble to get down here. I don't like the look of this, those floors. How can they survive underground? These are no ordinary flowers. First I thought it was going to be uh, opium. I mean, they're about to trip some shit. Wait. There's electric lights down here. Umbrella. Umbrella. What? What was Umbrella doing? I don't know. It doesn't look like anyone's been around for a while. You can be sure they wanted to keep this place a secret. Some of this equipment's got the Triso logo on it. But nobody's been here for a while. See, I thought Tricell was going to turn out to just be an, uh, a new cover for uh, Umbrella's operations. Yeah, it was just a partner program. I got another file I'm guessing you didn't get. Nope. The Indi, uh, the Indi Paya tribe file. I'm guessing those are the poor bastards we've been mowing down this whole time. Goody. I guess their story's over. All the treasures, I guess. Gold beetle, a valuable and almost legendary beetle. Pan's got a thing for beetles. Do they? Oh yeah, like uh, the Pokemon is based off of like bug battling. Oh huh. You know, yeah, you know, beetle. You know, catch a catch a bug and like, I guess kind of put them in a jar and make them fight. I don't know the specifics of it, but. Having a like rhinoceros style beetle is like the coveted prize of that. New items in the store. The SIG P226 handgun. Uh, I, I don't have that either. I'm not gonna lie, it does. Oh, it's got better firepower but lower other stats than the other two. I don't know, it's not really what I use the uh, pistol for anyway. We can now buy rocket launchers for 10,000 each. Oh, and a bulletproof vest. I can't uh, upgrade the handgun. Provides uh, web protection against weapons fire. Can be worn with a melee vest. Hmm... We have been going after a lot of uh, ranged weapons lately, but this level does take place entirely in enclosed environments so far. Yeah. I think I'll let it pass for now. Can I upgrade anything in here? Purchased all available upgrades for the game. Okay, I think I'll just hold my money for now then and see if... Uh... Anything becomes necessary. Throw an upgrade on that, I guess. So how much you want to bet this this special flower has something to do with their by answers. Not sure. But obviously there's a connection here with Umbrella. And that's never a good sign. 
We can worry about this later. First, we need to find out about Jill. You're right. Let's see what we can dig up. Yeah, the, what do you say? These uh, these special flowers have something to do with the upgraded Plagas. Ooh. I like okay. that idea. Investigate Umbrella. What's their connection to all this? Umbrella? What do they have to do with this? Almost exactly the same thing. There's another box up here, but I can't go up this these stairs. Which is weird, considering we've had discussions about uh, Shabbos Hops. Yeah. This is it. This generator is on. It is... Stuff looks like it hasn't been touched in 20 years. But you can hear it! What an umbrella need with all this heavy equipment here? And what uh, and what use would they have for all this equipment down here? So. Oh, hey, emblem. Under the little bridge over there. Yeah. I'm just... Like... Okay, like, that thing, is is that, like, electrically powered or gas-powered? Just trying to think of what you could even have that would... Oh, I see a glimmer up in the sky. It's the sun. I don't actually I know where it... Fall. I, know... I saw it fall. I don't know exactly where. I think it may be... Somewhere close to the generator that has mysteriously been on for however many years. Investigate, was Umbrella doing research on these flowers? Looks like water purifiers. The water is probably for the flowers. Oh, one bumper, yeah. I can honestly say I was not expecting to see an umbrella facility at the bottom of this, uh... Oh, who are you kidding? <laughs> they weren't after these flowers, were they? I got exactly the same words for the, uh, water purifiers. Let's check to see if that gem fell by the generator. What the fuck do we get down there? Wait. Maps just makes it look like we can just be able to go around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gemstone. Oh, you found it. Hello. Oh, there you are. I was, like, I was doing, like, the call out to it like it's a dog thing. I did not actually expect that to uh, produce any results. Oh, this is totally where we're going, isn't it? Huh. Oh, yeah. What did you think we were doing? Oh, we came in from the other direction, that's right. Oh! Document! A clipboard with some old and new documents attached to it. Construction Supervisor's Log. So we finally kicked the Endipaya from the ruins they were squatting in. I have heard it was just to get this flower field, but it's the least of my concerns right now. One thing I do know is that construction here has been a colossal headache. Trying to build something among these ruins is almost impossible to begin with, and just to get started, we had to change the groundwater channels. That meant the flower bed wasn't getting ir irrigated properly, and now the flowers are dying. And to top it all off, I have the head researcher, Brandon, breathing down my neck. He says he wants the facilities to be at least three times bigger than originally planned. Seems like poor management. Uh, so after that got approved, they fired the supervisor before me, Peter. Not sure why, though. Maybe he looked at them wrong or something. If I let these flowers die, the same thing will happen to me. I can't help but sympathize with poor Petey. Working with these science types is a pain in the ass. I hope we find a new water source soon. Our surveys showed that there might be some groundwater 500 meters or so down. That's pretty deep, so we'll probably have to make use... Probably have to use that new pump system the Fabiano company makes. Uh, hopefully that'll work, but with how everything has went so far, I'm sure something will go wrong. The only problem is that I have no idea when I'll be getting these new pumps. Uh, even best case scenario, there's no way we'll get those new pumps in here and set up before the year is out. Looks like we'll just have to use old-fashioned manpower to fetch water for these flowers so they don't die. Looks like I'm going to be spending the last Christmas of the 60s away from my family in a dank, dark cave playing gardener for some flowers. Ain't life a bitch? 1969. I was not expecting that age, certainly. 
The document following this is newer. Administrator's log. The pumps are properly irrigating the progenitor flowers, uh oh, but they require a lot of maintenance. Umbrella installed these pumps over 30 years ago. It's a wonder that they still even work. The tank that filters the water is barely holding up. We need to replace these pumps as soon as possible. In a lucky turn, I found the log of Umbrella's construction supervisor. It said that the pump system was here was designed by a company called Fabiano. I think we use Fabiano pumps in our Natural Resources Development Division. I'll talk to Mr. Irving, the foreman of the oil plant, and see if we can't get some newer pumps from him. Huh. Jump cut. And we're back. I guess that's how Irving knew about all this, because they told him, hey, we need pumps for this underground shit in the temple. There's another document here. And a door. Read document. From Chief Researcher Brandon's Journal, number one. 1966. December 4th. Mr. Spencer once spoke of a flower called the Stairway to the Sun. Supposedly, this flower would be, give the person who concerned it incredible abilities. Everyone thought it was nothing more than a rumor or legend that Mr. Spencer was telling us, but later research would prove us wrong. The first uh, person to recognize the validity of that story was my teacher, Dr. James Marcus. He hypothesized that a virus, hereto unknown, might exist that could alter DNA. The man was so perspicacious. His hypothesis turned out to be correct. The virus discovered in that flower was labeled progenitor. For three months in Africa, we worked diligently, fretted over results, and staved off attacks from the Endipaya. Uh, after such time, our efforts were finally rewarded. Even Dr. Marcus, who until yesterday looked exhausted, was in good spirits. He wants to return home as soon as possible to delve deeper into his research. I feel the same way. I want to learn the secrets of this progenitor virus as soon as possible. 1967. February 12th. We've hit the metaphorical brick wall. He brought the progenitor flower back from Africa and attempted to cultivate it here. The initial culture samples of the progenitor virus have not shown DNA-altering characteristics. We cultivated the flower to mass-produce the progenitor virus. At first, everything proceeded smoothly. The plants were strong and grew quickly. In a short amount of time, they flowered. But here is when a major problem surfaced. The flowers did not contain the progenitor virus. Perhaps the environment in which they're grown triggers the development of the virus. This matter must be investigated further. March 23rd. We've made no progress. We've tried cultivating the flower under different conditions, but with no luck in triggering the development of the virus itself. Thus far, we have tried changing the soil, water, temperature, and light exposure, all with no success. I got in a heated debate with Dr. Marcus about the dire uh, direction this research was taking. Uh, during the debate, Mr. Spencer interjected some foolhardy notion of starting a company. Without the progenitor virus, there's no point in starting a company. Does he not see that? It's all pointless. Hmm. I'm guessing Mr. Spencer would be one of the founders of Umbrella. Yeah, they mentioned him in the flashback. Oswell Spencer. I think the first... Uh, you know, I haven't played the first game, but I seem to remember reading that the first game took place inside Spencer Mansion. So, I'm gonna guess just something about the like particular mineral deposits of this area uh, are what uh, trigger the virus. Yeah, like it has to be here. I don't know if I want to open this, but I'm going to do it anyway. It's just an office. Okay. It's never just an office. Oh god, look at all the... Oh, we're going to be reading for a while. Oh yeah, look I can turn that. on this computer too. Nice startup screen. Research Center Director Brandon's Journal. 1998. The year the shit hit the fan. November 16th, we've closed down the research center. It's strange, but I don't really care. I'm indifferent to the whole thing. I feel the same way as when I heard that the Arclay facility and Raccoon City were destroyed. When did I become so apathetic? I know that, uh... I think the mansion was in the Arclay Mountains. 
I spent every waking moment researching and extracting the progenitor virus. Everything I did was for Dr. Marcus. Actually, when I think about it, I probably stopped caring the day I heard he had died all those years ago. I don't feel angry or happy or even shocked. I feel nothing... I felt nothing at all. It was as if all my emotions just shut down. I just kept sending out samples of the progenitor virus to all of Umbrella's laboratories. I was just an automated ma ma machine, reporting to Umbrella headquarters every time one of my subordinates made a breakthrough or discovered something new. I was like a zombie ambling through life. No thoughts, no feelings, and now the research center where I've spent half my life is closed. I really don't care one way or another. It's probably all for the best. Perhaps it is too late to have any semblance of a life again. Telegram from James Marcus. T-Virus Development a Success. January 13th, 1978. J. Marcus. Hmm. That's it. There's one over here, too. From Chief Researcher Isn't... Brandon's Journal Number 2. 1968. April... Oh, man. If it's got m dates on it, it's going uh, to take a while. What were you going to say? Uh, I was just saying that that's all it was on that one, uh, and this computer appears to be broken. Maybe it's not plugged in. Hmm. Huh. I guess the other one was a telegram. Uh, April 15th, it's been over a year since we've had any breakthroughs. That's why Dr. Marcus and I have decided to return to Africa. We can no longer continue our research without the progenitor virus. I know those routine attacks with the Indipaya are really going to rack my nerves, but for the uh, sake of our research, I will persevere. In the face of my foreseen dismay, it was Mr. Spencer who provided the answer. If you're worried about the ND Pia, then we'll just have to remove them from the equation. I can only imagine the look of shock on our faces. The idea never occurred to us. It was quite an atypical solution to our problem, but it seemed to be the only option available. Dr. Marcus and I decided to try Mr. Spencer's plan. August 19th. Finally, some good news. We've learned that we were able to chase the ND Pia off their land. The land we acquired only amounts to half of those underground ruins, but it includes the area where the progenitor vi flower grows, then there should be no issues. Mr. Spencer said he plans to construct research facilities at the site, which will expedite our research into the virus. We hastily made our pre uh, preparations to depart for Africa, but Mr. Spencer requested that Dr. Marcus stay in Raccoon City to take over the training center. We were initially taken aback by this request, but we soon realized it was a logical course of action. Dr. Marcus needs a calm environment to properly conduct his research. If he were in Africa, there would be no proper facility for him to use at this time. I just hope the African research facilities get built soon. So now I will go alone to Africa and send back samples of the progenitor virus to Dr. Marcus. Both Dr. Marcus and Mr. Spencer agree that this is the best course of action. I have to start making preparations to go. I have a feeling I'll be pretty busy starting tomorrow. September 29th. I've been in Africa for two weeks now. It's a good thing Dr. Marcus isn't here. This place is far from being a paradise of research and scientific study. The so-called research facilities are nothing more than a bunch of tents. We have to employ armed soldiers to keep the Indy Pia at bay. But the thing that gets on my nerves the most is the sound of the construction of the real research facilities. How am I supposed to concentrate on research when everything is threatening to drive me insane? I'm trying to just concentrate on extracting virus samples from the progenitor flower so I can send them to Dr. Marcus. Hopefully, if I focus on my work, I can remain sane in this godforsaken place. 1969. June 15th. The research facilities are finally completed. This is the real Umbrella Africa Research Center, not just some pile of tents. But I've come to a realization in the past nine months. The facilities are too small for our needs. We need to make them larger, more suitable for research. Then we can fill them with more talented researchers. This place needs to be our front line in our progenitor virus research. Our results will do a great service to Dr. Marcus and his viral research. In a rare turn of events at Old Skinflint, Spencer actually agreed with me on this. Hmm. Hmm. I think I've been hearing zambles outside this door. Yeah, I don't like the sound of that. Oh, I don't probably like nothing. that. It's probably nothing. Just the wind. Invoice copy. Umbrella training facility. Dr. James Marcus. Five, five cases of progenitor sample. December 15th, 1977. Africa Research Center Director Brandon Bailey. 
Oh. Um, whatever that was, crawled over there, but he also left behind an herb. I got one of those, I'll combine those. Alright, and then something's going to happen on the other side of this door. Naturally. Oh no. Oh no. See what you mean. They must be processing these flowers to make something. Wait. This is the facility from the picture. No doubt about it. We're finally getting somewhere. Are they ultimately trying to say that everything that started all the mutation viruses and zombie protocols and whatnot are all from Africa? Seems to be kind of where they're going with that. So it's Africa's fault. Oh, jeez. Power on. Tricell logo. The other one started with an umbrella logo. Uh, Tricell uh, researcher Miguel's journal, number one. February 19th. When I heard it was the laboratory used by Umbrella in Africa, my expectations were raised, to say the least. But when I saw it, well, it's a lab in name only. I don't know how Umbrella's ever used it, and Lord knows how Tricell could possibly have any use for it. The place was abandoned long ago, so there's nothing of there of any value to us. Not one piece of lab equipment remains, at least nothing that still works. I can't say I'm surprised, because I half expected this. Anyway, the important thing is the progenitor virus. If we didn't need that virus for our research, there would have been no need to come to this run-down umbrella facility anyway. We already have samples of the T-virus, the G-virus, the T-Veronica virus, and even the Las Plagas parasite. We have everything we need for our research. We just didn't have that Dan progenitor virus. But we finally got our hands on it. Hopefully, this will give us that much-needed breakthrough on our research. I can't wait to start working on it. March 7th. I wonder who came up with the name Liquor for those creatures. Oh. I mean, when you see its long tongue, you just know it's the perfect name. But for researchers like me, B.O.W.'s like Liquors are just a pain in the ass. If I said liquors were too perfect, I'd probably be going too far in my praise. Uh, oh, this is going to be hard to keep a straight face with. Uh, uh But they're pretty much an evolutionary dead end. There's no room left for improvement. BOWs that were created using the T-virus don't seem to show much improvement when the progenitor virus is administrated. administered. I mean, their ability shows some slight improvements. For example, their sense of smell seems more or less improved. But that's all we've got so far. They're still... They're still blind as an old lady, and they're ugly as shit. The biggest jump in their evolution seems to be their ability to... Oh, you're really not going to like this next word. Reproduce. Oh, no. I hate when things don't go according to plan, but since there's still a demand for liquors on the BOW market, I guess things aren't all that bad. End document. And on that cheery note, I guess we'll call it an episode. Yeah. Oh boy. I'm Burning Dog Face. I'm Ronan Drake. And we'll see you in the next episode of Let's Both Play Resident Evil 5. Yeah. Later.